whatever path you take, celibacy, if it is imposed on yourself or on the seeker, will actually turn out to be detrimental to the path of seeking. What happens to the male then is that he's able to keep the female satisfied, but at the same time, he's able to maintain his strength. He doesn't become, he doesn't lose the, the virya, which would then take him 28 days to build up that strength again. Namaskar. It's Anna again. What are the benefits for someone who is not a sannyasi to be celibate and to not be um, expelling that sexual energy, I guess, in today's world? Celibacy is not something you can impose on yourself. If you impose celibacy on yourself, if you, if you force celibacy on yourself in an attempt at spiritual realization, which many, many, many seekers do, you know, monks and matas, matas are the Indian version of it, but the Buddhist monks, the Christian monks, they, they impose celibacy on themselves with the idea that if you are celibate, you have a better chance to reach something divine or to reach source or truth or, or God or whatever. And this is, this is a, it's a fallacy in, in thinking, it's a fallacy in spiritual transformational work. Because when you impose something on yourself, you are suppressing something. Celibacy is something which arises on a spiritual journey. It arises automatically and sometimes disappears again and then arises again. So if you take up a spiritual path of self-transformation, there will come a time when there is no sexual desire in the system because that is the period when the system is meant to gear all its energies towards certain actions that are needed for that transformation. Whether it's tantric work you do or whether you're an Advaitin, whether you're a, a Vedantin, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Whatever path you take, celibacy, if it is imposed on yourself or on the seeker, will actually turn out to be detrimental to the path of seeking. So it is much better to move into transformational processes and spiritual processes leading what one would call a normal sexual life. That as far as imposing celibacy on yourself. Of course, for a man, if he can hold back that expulsion, he can train himself to have the experience of an orgasm but without losing his energy. That's a training he can do. Something which actually was common to males around the world in the preceding millennia. And, and you can see that reflected also in the Tantra Shastras and various texts that speak about this. So it's something known that a man could have uh, derived the, the joy of sexual communion 
without losing his energy. And those techniques are actually have been lost in the last few hundred years. It's not something that is that men can't relearn. It's it's a matter of discipline for a while, and after that it becomes second nature. And what happens to the male then is that he's able to keep the female satisfied, but at the same time he's able to maintain his strength. He doesn't become, he doesn't lose the, the virya, which would then take him 28 days to build up that strength again. So it's not worth it, it's not in his interest to do that. But because the expulsion of the virya and the orgasm have been seen as one when they are not the same thing, they are fundamentally different experiences. That is where the problem lies in the weakening of males. With females, the thing is that the release of, of substances which are similar to virya in men and the orgasm are separate, they are not close together as with the males. So the females lose much less in that process. So the orgasm of the female is not depleting her of the energy as it would for a male, because those two things are so close together for the male, whereas for the female they are separate. Which is why encouraging a female to expel that is, is modern age nonsense, because she loses her, her strengths like that. So celibacy, if it is practiced at the beginning of a spiritual journey with that kind of, you know, fervor and discipline and everything is just going to result in a lot of mess and misery. Most of the time there are always exceptions, but not that many. It will result in, in various kinds of degenerations in the system also. Celibacy appears automatically when the seeker is focused on living from the truth in a state of surrender. The more you bend and the more you say, okay, this, this body, this person, this thing here is an instrument of the truth. It is living in the truth as an instrument of the truth. It is refusing to go with the ahankar, with the ego. The more you will be on the path of self-realization. And there comes a time when celibacy appears and it's not something you have to do, it just is there then. And it may disappear again, depending on what the system needs to fulfill its experience and to be fulfilled in the growing experience of self-realization, because self-realization is not a goal. It's something that deepens as you grow, you move into, into older age and closer towards leaving the body. It just grows and grows and grows and you become more and more the truth in expression. So that would be the better way to go. The idea that uh, celibacy is the starting point which many systems preach, actually, is, is uh, a dangerous way to take a spiritual quest forward and most of the time unsuccessful. <laughs>